Today I'm going to talk about how you can tell when your colonies are likely to swarm because it's not desirable to have colonies swarming and the steps you can take to prevent your colony swarming, particularly in early spring when you need a big population of bees to take advantage of future nectar and pollen flows. I'm an Illawarra Beekeepers, club of the New South Wales Amateur Beekeepers Association that fosters good beekeeping and education about bees. So honeybees, natural means of increasing is to swarm and when they swarm, the colony prepares about 12 queen cells on the bottom edge of the frames and about two days before the, the queen cells hatch, which is 16 days after the queen laid the egg, the hive is likely to split in half and swarm. The external signs that bees are likely to swarm is indicated by the flight of the bee. So if there's a lot of flight of bees, it's an indication the colony is strong and particularly if the bees are going across the whole width of your entrance. So if you see that, you need to look inside the hive to look for the presence that the bees may be, uh, may be swarming. And the indication is about 12 queen cells on the bottom edge of the brood frame. So in this hive here, there's a lot of activity, so the hive is likely to swarm. The bees also will often hang up the front of the hive in great numbers because there's insufficient room for them to all get inside the colony. So that's an indication your bees are swarming and they need to be checked. The bees that we're now observing are bees that have come back with food. They've flown a fair way, they're fairly exhausted. So because they're exhausted, they've landed at the front of the colony before walking into the colony. And this is a sign of a honey flow or a pollen flow that's really great in spring. And this often happens in spring you know, where bees actually walk into the colony. If we look inside a colony, we can tell if it's overcrowded by removing the lid and looking under the lid. And if we look under the lid in this colony, we see quite a few bees that are idle and they're in the lid. So that's a sure indication there's a population of this hive is fairly strong and an indication the colony may swarm in the spring. If we look further and remove the lid and we look at the top of the tops of the frames we can see bees are on every frame in this super and also there's bees above the frames if I remove a frame we can see what the condition of this super is like and this is now in early August so we can see from this frame there are a fair number of bees up in the super and the super has got good supply of stored nectar and honey. Nectar's in the open cells, honey's in the cap cells. So now we're going to look inside a colony in August that's fairly strong, that potentially you know, may swarm in about September. Colonies normally swarm you know, once or twice a year if they're not managed properly. So we take the lid off, puff under the lid, put the lid back on, take the lid off and we'll notice there's bees in the lid, so it's a reasonably strong colony. We'll lift off the super, and then we can look in the brood box. So we puff again, lift the excluder off, check there's no queen on the queen excluder, which there isn't. Put it on upside down on the super, then the second frame from the wall is usually the easiest one to take out with the hive tool. So we take this out to look at the brood nest to see what the strength of the colony is likely to be. So we pull that out carefully like that and we notice that the second frame from the wall has already got drone cells in it. So an indication that bees are prosperous this time of the year and may be going to swarm is the evidence of drone cells. So there are drone cells there, there are worker cells there. So this indicates the colony is in excellent condition for this time of the year. We also note that there's protein in the form of pollen stored in those cells there. And that's a sign that the colony is in excellent condition this time of the year and potentially could swarm in the next three or four weeks. We'll now examine 
another frame. So I'll place that frame out of the colony but not on the ground. So we now pull this frame out and we look at this frame and we'll notice, just out of interest, there's what we call a dummy queen cell, which is just there. That's not a swarm cell, but if the colony was going to swarm, the, the bees will make their own cells, a queen cells, along this bottom edge of the comb. So they're likely to put them there, there, maybe there, and about 12, but in any frame in the brood box. So you need to look at every frame in the brood box to see if your colony's likely to swarm. In this case here, the bees have converted a worker cell into a queen cell. That means that the bees replace their own queen or if the queen's been killed and they build emergency cells, they already use larva where they were going to replace the queen by feeding larva that were going to be workers. Supersedure cells are built you know, as queen cells but on the face of the comb like that and there's usually only one, two or three on that face like that. So on this frame here, which is the third one in from the wall, we have good stored pollen, we have seal brood, we have unseal brood and we have what we call a dummy queen cell. So if the hive was going to swarm that shaped cell would be placed on the bottom of the edge of the comb along here and they might build two or three here, two or three in another frame, two or three in another frame until they get about 12 peanut shaped cells that after maturing they hatch and the colony will swarm. The swarm usually departs two or three days before the first queen cell hatches. From the time the eggs laid the colony will swarm two or three days before it emerges, so it takes 16 days, so the 14th day onward the colony may swarm, but that queen cell will be on that lower edge there and there'll be about 12 in the colony. So here we have a worker bee about to emerge. That egg was laid 21 days ago. It's cap brood here and here is stored pollen, which is an indication that the colony has got a lot of protein in the hive because pollen is protein. Another sign that colonies may swarm is the presence of drones in August and that bee there is a drone, a male bee, they don't sting. So if you see a lot of male bees this time of the year it's also a sign of prosperity and we saw drone brood previously that hadn't hatched but this one's already hatched and that's a male bee. So you see a lot of them in your colony, it's an indication the colony may well want to swarm in the spring. So this is an excellent example of a colony that may swarm because of the full frame of brood that's all capped that's about to hatch. We notice a good store of pollen in this area here and we notice here the queen and she's only a young, you know, active queen. The way she walks on the frame like she's walking there now. Her wings are smooth. Older queens are much slower moving around the frames and old queens are more likely to swarm with half the colony in the spring than a young queen like this one here is. So by having old queens in your colonies you're more likely to lose swarms. You can see this queen is moving around quite freely, smooth wings, an indication of a young queen that was probably put in this colony probably in the autumn. So this is a queen bee that's been marked with a thing called a Posca pen. Posca pens are available from office works and various newspaper outlets. It's a permanent mark for the queen and you mark her on a thorax like that and that makes it easier to find in a colony. In this colony we've got unseal brood here, that's seal brood there, unseal brood here and that's an indication you know, of prosperity and the colony expanding this time of the year and may well swarm in the spring. We're in a position now where colonies have built up and they may swarm and it's not desirable to have colonies swarm because you lose half the workforce and if that happens in early spring you're going to miss out on the summer honey flows because you've lost half your bees in a swarm.
So there are a number of steps we can take so you can keep your bees and prevent them from swarming. And we'll go through a number of steps in this next segment um, to demonstrate that. Bees swarm because they get overcrowded. And that's the main reason why they swarm. Except if the queen's young, she's less likely to swarm. So by expanding the size of the cavity, we can prevent bees from swarming. So by placing a super on the hive, is a good method to give the bees a lot more room and space. The super that I've just placed on the colony is one that's been taken off and stored over winter. The combs in this super are all new combs that were drawn in late autumn, as indicated by that frame there. So in this super, I have placed frame of foundation. So if the bees have got something to do, they're less likely to swarm and they've got a lot more room in the cavity to utilise this space. The super can be placed where I've placed it now on the top and the bees will come up or the super here can be taken off, put on the top and this super put above the queen excluder. And that's probably the best method because the bees don't have as far to walk to utilise this increased cavity size. So that's one thing you can do to increase the cavity. Another method that can be used to give the colony space, if you've only got, say, two boxes, is to remove some of the brood combs. You must check that the coin's not on the coin excluder. So the method I'm going to use now is we don't have to actually find the coin. So we can take out frames of brood. And I'm going to take out of the brood box frames of capped brood. It's easier to not have to find the queen because we don't want to put the queen away from the colony. So the way to not have to find the queen is to pull out frames of seal brood and shake them at the front of the colony. If the queen's on the frame, she will run up there and run into the brood box. So I've got one frame of brood there. Because this is a strong colony, I don't want it to swarm. I need to remove frames of seal brood from the brood nest to remove the congestion. So I just shake the bees out the front, not looking for the queen, check the frame, no queen on it, just worker bees, and I'll get another one. So I've taken three frames of brood, that's seal brood mainly, out of this brood box. I put them to one side, I then get frames of comb that's either drawn or foundation that's got no brood in it. Because it's springtime, I can spread the brood out a bit. So I put one frame there. I get another frame here that's already got brood in it, like this one. I shift it to there. I get another frame that's got no brood in it. I place it in there. I space the frames out again and I get another frame of foundation that I put in there. Now what that's going to do is give the queen some work to do and that is an inhibit, it may inhibit the chance of her swarming. I then put the queen excluder back on the hive like so and need to put them to one side. I get and put the original super on the colony, like so. And I remove from this super frames of honey. So there's a frame of honey there, I remove it, 
I remove another frame of honey and I remove another frame of honey. The frames are brewed, I now place above the queen excluder. This brew is going to hatch, so that will give the colony space if they collect any nectar to put in the top box there. The frames I put in the super, I put together like that, whereas I spaced the frames in the bottom box there. Assuming I haven't got another you know, box to put on, I can then put the lid on like so. So because the colony was crowded, I've given them more room in the brood box. Work to do, three frames of foundation or frames with no brood in, lifted seal brood up here. Now it's probably important to check that brood because sometimes they'll start super seed yourselves above the excluder. So after a couple of, after say five days, just check that there's no queen cells started above the excluder. If there is, just break them down. If they start queen cells up here, the colony can swarm, but the hive will die because the virgins can't get through the queen excluder. So that's you know, one method I've demonstrated to give the bees more work to do to inhibit swarming. So to help reduce swarming, another method that can be used to remove bees from the strong colony and place the bees in a weaker colony. A simple way to do that is to lift frames up above an excluder from the brood nest after you've shaken the bees off so there's no risk of the queen being on the frames that you're going to transfer the bees off. So you remove the lid from the hive and remove frames of brood that I've lifted up above the queen excluder. Now you'll notice that these frames here are covered with a lot of bees. The bees on these frames are what we call nurse bees because they're looking after the brood and they haven't orientated back to this strong hive. So I can now transfer them to another hive and they will stay at that other hive. So these are two frames that I've removed from a hive that's likely to swarm that are brood frames. I've left them for a few minutes so any bees that were unloading any food into this frame, which are field bees, have flown off because I've left them sit for a few minutes. And all the bees here are nurse bees that haven't orientated from the parent colony that was strong. I can now select a weak hive, and this is a weak hive, and I just simply shake these bees at the entrance, just like that. And just like that. Now, because these bees are not going in to rob, they're going in for shelter. The bees in the colony are not alarmed. So these young nurse bees won't kill the queen in that colony. They'll walk in and as they mature, they will become feral bees. So that's a simple way of transferring young bees to a weaker hive. The weak hive will benefit tremendously from the nurse bees and the strong hive is less likely to swarm because I've removed bees from that parent colony and that's reduced the congestion of worker bees in that colony. I've done this many times, never ever lost a queen bee. And if you've got two hives at home, one strong, one weak, that's one way of doing it. No fighting, queen's gonna be safe, even though they are strangers to this hive. So you'll notice that when I shook the bees out the front, they're walking in the entrance, there's no problem. If I had this frame and didn't shake it out the front, covered with young nurse bees, and I placed it in the brood nest of this weak hive, they'd fight and the queen would probably be lost. The bees that you put from another colony have to be young bees, which you get off brood frames, and if they walk through the front door, there's never any problems. Another method of preventing bee swarming is to artificially swarm the colony by dividing the bees by using equipment. So you split the hive effectively in half, which will prevent the parent colony from swarming. The easiest method, without spending a lot of money on equipment, is to use a DMRE board. 
that goes between the two boxes and it's got entrances in it so the bees can access this which we'll see in a little while. The advantage of using this in your backyard is your neighbours still think you've got one hive because you've got one hive on top of another hive as opposed to having another separate stack of bees which may alarm your neighbours. To implement this method it's necessary to turn the colony around because we want to disorientate the bees in the brood box. So we need to shift it and turn it around 180 degrees. So we've now turned the colony completely round. We then need to unstrap it and remove the super. <coughs> so we can see there's quite a lot of bees in this super. We can then, in the bottom box where the original queen is, place another super. And then on top of that, we place a board called the Dee Marie board. So this is a Dee Marie board and we place the entrance, that's a butterfly entrance, the direction the original hive was flying. And you'll notice now a lot of bees are accumulating at the front. They're the bees that have gone out in the field and they're coming home. So I'll now place this box on top of the Dean Marie board like that. So, the queen bee is in the bottom box, and remember before I lifted up some brood above a queen excluder, after I shook the bees off the brood, so that I'm not transferring the queen into the top box. So here, you know, we've got a frame of brood, and some's unsealed, some sealed. I now place that back in there, and I've put three frames of bees and brood in this top box. I've ordered a queen bee, and a queen bee comes in a bag like that. And inside the bag, I will find a queen cage, worker bees, and a queen bee. Now it's important, the plug end doesn't have a cork in it. And in that plug end, there's icing sugar and honey. And the bees in this colony will chew through that icing sugar and honey and requeen this top box. So, Half the bees, or approximately half the bees, a bit less, are in this top box now because I've turned it round. It's weakened the population in the bottom box that was going to swarm, so it's now not going to swarm. I get this queen and I place her between the frames of brood in this top box with the spout up. So in case some of the bees die that are in it, the workers, they'll block that entrance up. So it's important that that's up. I place it between the frames like that, shut it up like that, put the lid on. This lid's insulated, so the queen's not going to overheat. If there's risk of overheating, you can put a shovel full of dirt on the lid, it'll insulate it a bit. I leave that 10 days. It's important to leave it 10 days. The bees will chew through that icing sugar and honey, release the queen. 10 days later, if I look, if I see young brood, I don't have to do anything. This one has got the young queen in it. This has got the old queen in it. Both are functioning colonies. By turning it round, the field bees are going to go into here. Bees in the bottom box will work for the need of the colony. So bees that were nurse bees in the bottom box before it was turned around will become field bees. So the bottom box will survive and the top box will be requeened. If you don't want to own two hives, because there's two hives there now. In the, later in the year when bees stop swarming, you can kill the old queen in the bottom, place a sheet of newspaper between the two boxes, take the queen excluder out, and the bees will chew through the paper, and the new queen will become the mother of the colony below. 
With the DeMarie board, it's normal to only have one gate that's cut at 45 degrees. This board's got two gates so that when this becomes established, I can open both gates if need be to give them bigger entrance area. You can buy DeMarie boards from some bee clubs. You can make your own and some beekeeping supply places sell these boards. They're very easy to make. You just need a sheet of tin, a riser, and you know, cut the angle at 45 degrees so that the entrance will open. And by opening like it is here, you'll see that the bees can land on it and go in and use it as a normal entrance. You'll notice here, we've only done it five minutes ago, these worker bees that were field bees have got their scent glands out, which is at the back of the abdomen, calling all these bees that are out in the field to the new home that's higher up than it was originally. After about a day, they'll all get used to using this higher gate. So the entrance that was originally at the bottom is now not there, this is the back of the box, and the entrance that was here is now at the other end, 180 degrees away, and the bees that come out that haven't been out before, that were nurse bees, will reorientate and become field bees because the need of the colony wants food and the bottom box and hive will survive. It's got the majority of the brood in it, so it's going to build up a population quicker than this top box, and that's why I put the super there instead of up here because there's no check in the brood here because the queen is laying all the time. We're now looking at the original entrance, which was 180 degrees the other way, where this hive has been for over winter. We've turned it round and you'll notice that there's not much flight activity here now because it's only been done for five minutes. There's an odd bee going in. So the bees here will need to reorientate the field bees to come back to this entrance. And tomorrow, there'll be a lot more flight at this entrance, as well as at the new entrance that's up higher in this box here. So we've effectively split the hive in half without losing the swarm. Yeah, this video has explained how you can manage your hives to reduce the risk of swarming. If bees swarm, you get far less honey in the honey season because you've lost half your population. So it's important to control swarming, also from the point of view of neighbours. Swarms usually only go 200 metres. They land in your neighbour's backyard. That can be often problems. So we really encourage people to have best management practices, keep young queens and manage their hives properly. It's important that, you know, when you do any manipulation, you check for brood diseases first because you don't want to be spreading disease by transferring frames and bees to other colonies. So really check the health of your bees and all ABA clubs got biosecurity officers um, that are familiar with pests and diseases of honeybees. By managing your hives, you're going to keep your neighbours happier. You're going to learn a lot more about managing bees, which is very rewarding. And every year and every season is going to be different.